experience that I had 40 years ago, in 1971, I was a graduate student in anthropology at Harvard University, and I had what I would call an existential crisis to start. And the crisis was questioning why was I in graduate school? Why was I studying to get a PhD? Uh, my father was a professor. My grandfather was a professor. And so I was really questioning whether I was in school because I had been brought up to go to school or if this was really my life's journey. So, I ended up dropping out of graduate school and getting rid of everything that I owned that would not fit into a backpack. And I started to hitchhike around the United States, uh, Canada, and Mexico. And in the in November of 1971, I ended up in San Francisco. And 1971 is still what we call the 60s, the hmm. cultural era of the 60s. In San Francisco it was. And I was just walking around Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, and somebody offered me a LSD tablet pill. And I decided, since I had never taken LSD, to go ahead and try it. And I did that the next day. And when I took the LSD, I had, I think, a very pleasant experience. I saw many colors, and I saw trees that seemed to be alive and breathing. And I went to sleep thinking, well, that was interesting, but it did not seem so special or transformational. And then, in the middle of the night, I woke up to go just to the bathroom at an apartment I was staying at. I had met some people and I was just staying at an apartment. And I looked in the mirror and it seemed my, I was holding my hand in this position, which is, I don't know why, but I was holding it like this. And my hand seemed to be glowing it seemed to be giving off white light. And I knew right away what that meant. It meant that I was a reincarnation of Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> and then, in another instant, I realized I was also a reincarnation of Jesus Christ. And that I had a mission. My mission was to write a new holy book. It would be a holy book that would unite all of the people of the entire world. That Buddha had created a religion for the East, Christ had created a religion for the West, and I was going to create a new global religion. And so I sat down right then and I took a, a journal out of my backpack where I was just, you know, writing down thoughts and reflections. And I started to write this new holy book, new Bible. And I spent five days writing. I hardly slept. I took an hour nap here, an hour nap there. I snacked a little bit nuts and things, but I was writing, writing, writing. And I was having conversations with people like Bob Dylan. 
I felt I needed to get his advice on how to make this book popular. He was very good at making things well known. I also talked to Cat Stevens. These were all conversations in my head, but back and forth like a, a conversation. I also talked to Rousseau and Locke, who wrote very famous books on uh, society, the social contract, how we agree to live together. I also talked with Freud and Jung, got their advice, and R.D. Lang, and uh, this is Margaret Mead, the anthropologist. I wanted her advice on cross-cultural issues. Okay. So then, <clears throat> when I finished writing my book, <coughs> around 40 pages, I made uh, about 40 copies, and then I just had to decide how to distribute the book. And I thought that Berkeley, California was like the new Jerusalem. Here you can see the old Jerusalem and kind of a picture of an image of new Jerusalem. And I thought that if I went to Berkeley, and this is actually the exact corner that I went to in Berkeley, and you can see people are selling, you know, like uh, tie-dye t-shirts and jewelry and things like that. They still do if you go to that corner. And I started to pass copies of the book out to people <laughs> and in the street. And I thought that if I gave people copies, they would like them so much that they would pass them to other people. <laughs> and those people would pass them to other people. <laughs> and that very soon I would be recognized as the prophet of this new religion. And I was very lucky in that I then decided that I needed to wait for a while for these books to travel around the world. And I hitchhiked back to Chicago and to the uh, east coast of the United States where I had friends. And these friends let me stay with them for two months. I had no money. Um, I have met people in my own who have had similar experiences, who had, who did not have such good friends, and they ended up in the streets, and they ended up getting picked up by the police, and they ended up in a psychiatric hospital. But for two full months, my friends let me stay with them. They fed me, they took care of me, and they let me talk, talk, talk about these wonderful ideas I had. After about two months, my experience kind of came to an end. And I started to kind of think about, am I really a reincarnation of Buddha and Christ? Is this book really a holy book? And I had uh, a chance to then uh, start to question whether these things were true without any hospitalization or medication. And now we know in the transpersonal field that at least half of all people who have psychotic episodes, if they are allowed to just uh, continue their inner journey, they will also come back to everyday reality with no medication, 